Hello, mate. Thanks for clicking on this video and welcome to this extra spooky edition of the best games on PlayStation Now. You're about to see the best games on PS Now. And I reviewed them in order of their release uh, to help you see the evolution of the horror genre. Kind of. Um, it was actually because I thought the older games would be less scary and uh, would help ease me into it. And by ease into it, I mean putting off playing Resident Evil 7 for as long as possible. Is this, is this how to save? Ah! Oh, that's your freaking hand. <laughs> if you're new here, I just want to point out that I try to keep my reviews as transparent as possible, commenting on the game's current state in PlayStation Now when streamed on PC. I would recommend downloading all any PS4 game to your console rather than streaming if you have a PS4, but I like to test the technology and I don't have a PS4 anymore, so all the footage you see is streamed from my PC. Also, if you're new, um, please subscribe and like this video if you get to the end of it and you liked what you saw. That would mean a lot to me. That's it. Um, I'm going to drop my voice down into the lower register now to try and set the tone, and I promise not to scare you again without warning. All right, let's get into it. Silent Hill set a benchmark for 3D horror games, and PS Now has the remastered HD collection. Although, collection is a bit of a stretch, as it's only Silent Hill 2 and 3. These games are still spooky, even now, and that's all down to atmosphere. A thick fog envelops the player, obscuring the monsters lurking behind most corners. The soundtrack is suitably eerie, but its best trick is disappearing completely in enclosed spaces. Sadly, the gameplay hasn't aged so well. Combat is delayed, enemies take too many hits, camera and movement controls are clunky, and saves are few and far between. Maybe if I was playing the PS2 originals, I'd give them more leeway, but there are only a couple of actual PS2 games on PS Now and no PS1 games. There is a rumor flying around that PS Now on the PS5 will have backwards compatibility going all the way back to the PS1, which is hugely promising, apart from the fact that the rumor originated from 4chan. Fear was one of the first FPS horror games, before devs realized a first-person perspective heightens the immersion and is therefore much better at freaking me out. Oh my god! The first Encounter Assault Recon team is a secretive specialist task force assigned to deal with paranormal situations. Even in this elite group of military personnel, I'm the only competent one. Everyone else is swiftly murdered, forcing me to explore these horrors on my own. The atmosphere is again excellent, stretching tension across ominously quiet bits of downtime. But for the most part, Fear is an FPS within a horror setting, and while the gunplay is decent, shooting at possessed soldiers is decidedly less scary than an invisible enemy. It always takes a little time to adjust when streaming an FPS, and unlike most PS3 games, I struggled to stream Fear, which left some gunfights feeling sluggish. Siren Blood Curse is a reimagining of the first Siren game restructuring the story into an episodic format and adding gameplay tweaks in line with more recent games in the series. You witness the story from 10 different characters' perspectives, each trying to stay alive in this cursed Japanese village. Over time, you uncover their true intentions and realize that they're not all here for the same reason. Blood Curse is skillful in its multi-directional storytelling, pulling at different threads of the story to create doubt and mystery. Impressive stuff for 2008, and a framework that many future horror games would follow. There are a lot of different Resident Evil games on PlayStation now, and they differ depending on your region. 
In Europe, we get Code Veronica, Raccoon City, The Dark Side Chronicles, The Umbrella Chronicles, and Revelations 1 and 2. In the US, you get all of that, plus Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. If you're in the US, I'd recommend Resi 4. It revolutionized the third-person action-adventure with the over-the-shoulder view, but it was the separation between movement and aiming that I remember most. I still get second-hand stress thinking about being rooted to the spot while swarms of crazed villagers ran straight at me. Alas, I'm in Europe. Kind of. So I recommend Revelations 2, especially if you can find a friend to play co-op with. This game requires genuine cooperation, splitting a traditional Resident Evil character in two, one focused on attack and one on support. The Evil Within is from the director of Resident Evil 4 and has several callbacks to that game. I found few of them to land right. Stealth takes priority over combat, asking you to creep past zombie-like infected. I've got no problem with stealth-heavy games, especially in the horror genre, and I'm definitely not suggesting that Resi 4's combat would hold up in a modern-day game, but The Evil Within feels bogged down. I was tempted more to simply run past everything, and the game lets you do that with pretty much zero consequence. As for the setting, this was a time when Amnesia and Outlast were huge hits, and I think The Evil Within looked to mimic that slimy, pinkish art design. Again, not a problem. I wouldn't call myself squeamish unless you dangled a spider in front of my face, or you show me pictures of several tiny holes. I cringe just typing that out and now I have to find a picture to show you. Oh, oh I can't. It's too bad. Ugh. Standard horror tropes can still be done well. The great thing, maybe the best thing, about Until Dawn is its branching narrative, so multiple playthroughs are hugely rewarding. I love being able to manipulate decisions when I already know the final outcome. Until Dawn is probably the best PS4 exclusive that stayed on PS Now instead of being a time-restricted thing. Actually, Bloodborne has stayed on there as well, and I just realised that that's kind of a horror game, but I haven't included it in this list, so I'm sorry. But Until Dawn is a fantastic rendition of a classic teen slasher film, with the added bonus of player-controlled choices and a story with surprising depth. Put all those things together and it's no wonder why I love this game. Soma traps you in a research station at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. It's made by the studio that made Amnesia, but unlike that game, Soma tells of horrors deeper than monsters skulking in your peripheral vision. The Bioshock comp seems kind of obvious because it's underwater, but the main similarity for me was how Soma buries its narrative beneath exploration and problem solving. You slowly piece together what's happened and constantly second guess at what's real, partly because you don't know who to trust and partly because what you uncover is deeply unsettling. The storytelling is extremely hands-off and requires manual logic jumps from the player. It's small things like actually having to remember a code rather than it popping up on screen once you've found the right email that engage you in Soma's undersea world. This is real psychological horror, replacing freaky monsters and jump scares, although there are still a few. <laughs> Hello? Ah! Run. With guilt, pain, and philosophical questions. Yet horror is a fitting adjective for Soma because I was terrified of the answers. Things get off to a better start in The Evil Within 2. Instead of plunging you into the, oh no, the insane asylum patients have escaped and gone insanely murderous setting, you get some actual backstory for the protagonist. It's still what I would call soft gore porn over the psychological horror it claims to be, but maybe I've become a little numb this many games in. That said, compared to Soma's psychological horror, The Evil Within 2 falls very short, in my opinion. The sequel is mostly survival horror, with three openish locations to find ammunition and crafting materials. Whether you think that's an improvement will depend on how much you like the open world survival formula. Personally, I prefer my horror games in a compact box that you can't escape from. The Evil Within 2 has enclosed spaces, but it also has the same problem as the first game. It strips agency from the player and tension from the story, both fatal flaws in a horror game, with the frequency of cutscenes and scripted events. Me. I'm not here to watch a horror film, I'm here to direct. Better yet, I'm forced to direct, despite wanting to put the controller down, turn off the TV, and look at pictures of quackers.
Ah, oh, that's better. Which is the perfect segue into our final game. I haven't shown too much live footage yet, but I think this best exemplifies the genius behind Resident Evil 7 switch to a first person view. Miss me? <laughs> It's not just the first person perspective, but the intentional limits to that field of view. You creep through tight, damp corridors, hug the opposite wall as you approach corners, and peer through cracks in the door to see what hides behind them, all while the house creaks and whispers, never allowing you to drop your guard. Resident Evil has always had bonkers storylines. But in Biohazard, the confusion amps up the terror. There is such a deliberate lack of explanation that at no point did I know what was happening or what would happen next. I don't even know if this person's actually dead after I stick an axe in their collarbone or drive them into a wall or chainsaw them in the literal face. On the face of it, Resi 7 couldn't be farther from its predecessors, but it recaptured the sense of helpless dread that the original once did, and it's the best game the series has seen for some time. Hello? Uh. Did you hear that? But it doesn't look like you can go that way big red line there. You must, you, you must not be able to go that way. Oh, fuck. Alright, just leg it. Oh. Oh my god, what? Oh my god. I have shivers all around my body. I'm equal parts hyped and terrified to play the next one. The observant among you may have realized that that Resident Evil 7 footage was actually on Xbox, and that's because uh, Resi 7 also came to Game Pass, and my next video is the best horror games on Xbox Game Pass, and I didn't want to play the same parts of the game twice. But if you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of what the game looks like streamed and what the game looks like downloaded, uh, there it is. But make sure to look out for my next video um, on the best horror games. I wanted to, I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I wanted to hold off until October for, you know, the sake of Halloween, even though, you know, we're very early in October and it's not particularly scary at this point. Um, so, you know, and I mean, Halloween isn't that scary either because we're not seven anymore. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you very soon. Bye. Goodbye. Until we meet again.